بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم دس از لیکچر نمبر سیون فار انگلش کمپریہنشن اینڈ کمپوزیشن بفور وی موو آن آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ٹیل یو واٹ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈو ٹوڈے ٹوڈیز آبجیکٹوز آر وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ ورب ٹینسز ان انگلش لینگویج ان ایکسپشنل ڈیٹیل ویل بی ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ آل ٹویلو ٹینسز ہاؤ دے آر فارمڈ وین اینڈ وائی دے آر یوزڈ اینڈ واٹ آر دی انڈیکیشنز آف آئیڈینٹیفائنگ دیز ٹینسز فرام ون اینڈ ادر اینڈ دین وی آر آلسو گوئنگ ٹو ڈو سم پریکٹس ایکسرسائزز الانگ ود دی فارمیشن رولز اینڈ ریگولیشنز آف دیز ٹینسز سو لیٹس موو آن اینڈ اسٹارٹ آف ود Uh, a comprehensive document on uh, verb tenses that explains all 12 tenses separately with each and every indication uh, that will help you understand these tenses individually and in uh, collaboration with other tenses as well as they are used in English language uh, in the daily uh, use of this particular language. This is a handout uh, that explains uh, the usage of all the verb tenses that we have in English language using verb tenses. Uh, this handout is comprehensive and complete in itself uh, containing everything regarding uh, verb tenses that you might need for your uh, help uh, to understand these tenses. We know uh, we have 12 tenses in English language. Uh, what are those? Uh, how many categories they are? divided into uh, how each and every tense is different from one another and uh, how each and every tense is formed is what this document is all about. So let's begin and start off with trying to understand what tenses are, how are they different from time and how they are used in English language. A verb indicates the time of an action event or condition by changing its form. Now we have verbs in English language uh, right from the beginning when you start off studying English you are taught what a verb is and how is it different from a subject and object. So a verb basically indicates time in uh, your sentence. In whatever sentence you use verb, it indicates time of the action that uh, you are uh, doing. Uh, it can be the time of an action, in an event here that you are talking about or a condition by changing its form. And verbs are not just used in one form, they have uh, three, four different forms in English language. And you know what those forms are. They are uh, first form that is the root form or base form. Uh, then we have the second form that is also called the past tense form. And then we have the third form that is uh, your past participle or uh, the uh, past perfect form. And then we have the ing form and uh, we also have the s form. s form always goes for the first, uh, with the first form of the verb that is uh, the simple present tense. And the ing form is used for the continuous actions or con continuous tenses um, uh, that are scattered through all the 12 tenses that we have. Through the use of a sequence of tenses in a sentence or in a paragraph, it is possible to indicate the complex temporal relationship of actions, events and conditions. Now with the help of sequence of tenses that we use in English language, uh, in each sentence or in paragraph, we can uh, help determine the uh, complex physical relationship of all the actions, all the time that is uh, um, coming into play when we are speaking in English. Uh, for example, sometimes we talk about certain events that involve both present and past tense and sometimes both past and present continuous tense. So we have to be very careful where we have to use which tense and what is the sequence of tenses uh, that we are supposed to use. Sequence of tenses is, is another uh, very important uh, element of grammar in English language that uh, you can study separately. It's not part of your course here, but you can always find it in any good grammar books. And uh, once you understand what your uh, 12 tenses are, you can easily go over to understanding sequence of tenses. There are certain rules, of course, along with exceptions that you have to remember. And you have to apply those rules to whenever you are speaking English or trying to use English in writing form. Now there are many ways of categorizing the 12 possible tenses. The verb tenses may be categorized according to the time frame that is past tense, present tense and future tense. We can also categorize them according to uh, the perfect tenses or continuous tenses and then we can put all the three continuous tenses in that and perfect tenses we have three perfect tenses and then we have the uh, perfect continuous tenses so uh, and the simple tenses. They can also be ca uh, categorized like that but basic categorization is 
is according to the time frame that they fall in so uh, here we are going to talk about this category the category of time frame the first tense uh, verb tense according to time is there are four past tenses that is the simple past tense i went the uh, past progressive tense i was going the past perfect tense i had gone and the past perfect progressive i had been going so uh, these are the four past tenses we have the simple past tense that uh, that uh, shows its form right here um that is i went we have the same subject for all uh, the tenses and this is just to give you the formation basic formation of uh, uh, these uh, tenses uh, went is the second form of the verb and it is the second form of go we have go went and gone so with the simple past tense we use the uh, second form of the verb and then the past progressive tense progressive uh, means continuous whenever you come up with this word don't get yourself confused what the word progressive means progressive means something that is progressing that is continuous that is going on so continuous and progressive are the same words are the same meanings of this uh, of the same um, concept so the past progressive is exactly past continuous tense so past continuous tense ki formation hai i was going i is the subject was going is your verbal group here uh, uh, along with ing form you have to ha uh, use um, one um, uh, helping verb and according to past progressive tense it is going to be was so your the formation of your past progressive would be i was going the past perfect is i had gone that is uh, i is the subject had is the past tense form of have that is the perfect form and then we have the uh, past participle of go uh, go went and gone we have we use the third form of the verb for our perfect tenses always remember this once you remember this basic formation uh, it it is never going to be difficult for you to use these tenses wherever possible then uh, the fourth past tense is the past perfect progressive tense past perfect progressive tense uh, is uh, um the combination of both continuous and perfect tenses so it has a slightly longer verbal group as you can see it is uh, along with i that is the subject we had had been going had is the past uh, uh, form of have that is that uh, shows us that this is going to be a past tense perfect ki wajah se humne isme been lagaya hai aur progressive ko indicate karne ke liye we have added the ing form of go so it becomes i had been going so these are the four past tenses uh, that we have moving on to four present tenses we have the similar four ten uh, present tenses it's just that their uh, time frame is different past tenses indicate the past event whatever has happened in the past whether it's continuous whether it has ended whether it started in the past or ended in the past that's all about past the present tense indicates everything that happens in the past so, uh, sorry in the present so the simple present is i go you add the first form of the verb along with uh, for your simple present tense along with i we have go the present progressive uh, is i am going uh, present that means something that is happening in the present and progressive means continuous the something some action that is continuous or still going on in the present i am going am is uh, the helping verb according to the subject if you have uh, a different subject that is uh, we it is going to be we are going if you have you then again you are going she she is going so she uh, am is not the uh, one uh, helping verb that you are going to use here according to your subjects your helping verb is going to change but your ing form will remain the same whatever verb you want to use you have to have it in the ing form for your progressive tense the number 3 the present perfect tense i have gone the present perfect tense indicates an action uh, that has some impact on the present uh, that although is related to the past so present perfect tense uh, has the uh, helping verb as have and we have two helping verbs for present perfect tense has and have so has and have are used uh, according to your subjects has is, is basically used for singular subjects uh, and uh, uh, the third person and have is used for uh, all the other persons so 
it's not difficult to remember. Uh, have is used for uh, plurals, but with the exception of I and you, even if you is singular. You have, I have, we have. And the rest uh, always take uh, the uh, singular uh, verb here that is has. So, so if you have she has, he has, it has, and even if you have any names instead of he, she, uh, Salma has, Ahmed has, Asad has. So uh, has is uh, what you are going to use for singular third person. Then uh, we have the verb form that is the past participle, the third form of the verb um, in the uh, category of uh, present perfect tense. So as I told you earlier with the past perfect tense, uh, the perfect tenses always take the uh, third form of the verb as their verb. Number four is the present perfect progressive. Again, this uh, has a slightly longer verbal group. Uh, if it is uh, changed into a negative uh, uh, sentence, it, has, it is an even longer verbal group. The present perfect progressive is a combination of uh, a simple present. Uh, we have a perfect combination and we also have the ing form that is progressive. So for present, we have either the helping verb of uh, has or have. And then um, perfect key indication is may mean data and then we have um, ing form of going of go uh, as going for the continuous uh, indication so we have a longer verbal group here I have been going now note that the present perfect and present perfect progressive are present not past tenses that idea is that the speaker is currently in the state of having gone or having been going. Now uh, these uh, present perfect and present perfect progressive tense, these are uh, the present tenses. Although you are using I have gone, uh, they have some impact on the present. Uh, we are going to discuss these two tenses in detail in, in the coming pages and you will understand what the dis difference is. These tenses are usually taken to be as past but they are not past tenses. They are present perfect and present perfect progressive tenses because the doer of the action is actually in the state of either having gone or having been gone. So uh, this is the difference between these two. These are not past tenses. This is a one basic uh, um, mistake or error that students make regarding these two tenses. We are going to discuss this in detail soon. Now the four future tenses are the simple future, I will go, the future progressive, I will be going, the future perfect, I will have gone and the future perfect progressive, I will have been going. Now looking at the simple future, uh, for future tenses, uh, everybody knows that uh, you have two helping verbs that is will and shall. Here in the modern linguistic settings, uh, it's, it happens that uh, uh, will is used for all persons, but you should know where you have to use shall. Uh, if uh, it is, uh, uh, that's how it is, uh, you, you, your work is made a lot easier because you don't have to remember aapko shell kahan pe lagana hai, will kahan lagana hai. Uh, lekin, um, in uh, written compositions or in formal settings, you have to be able to identify between the usage of will and shell because uh, formal settings may professional settings may aapko uh, applications may letters may or technical correspondence mein ye uh, jo cheez hai ye differently use karna hoti hai i always takes uh, shell um, uh, we have only shell with uh, i and we uh, the rest uh, always all the other subjects take will as their helping verb that's what you have to remember it's uh, nothing nothing difficult at all so the simple future would be i will go Instead, it should have been I shall go, that's also correct, but I will go is also fine. Uh, you have the first form of the verb along with will. And then I, uh, the future progressive is I will be going. The one thing that you add to uh, future progressive tense is uh, be here. So uh, be helps you uh, identify the future progressive tense from all other tenses uh, that you have. And then we have the ing form indicating the progressive or continuous nature of the tense. The future perfect, I will have gone. Future perfect indicates uh, the future will and perfect tense is have gone. Uh, 
یہاں پر آپ کو ہیو اور ہیز میں ڈفرینس نہیں کرنا ہے یہاں پہ ایک ہی ہیلپنگ ویب آتا ہے دیٹ از ہیو اور ول جو ہے وہ چینج ہو سکتا ہے آئی شیل ہیو گون وی شیل ہیو گون دے ول ہیو گون لیکن ہیو جو ہے وہ چینج نہیں ہوتا اینڈ فار دا پرفیکٹ ٹینس یو ہیو دی تھرڈ فارم آف دا ورب گون And then the future perfect progressive we have I will have been going. This is the longest verbal group in English language verb, straight verbal group in, uh, without any negatives or without any questions. I will have been going is the future perfect progressive. Future is will, perfect is have been and progressive is the ing form of going. So these were the 12 uh, possible tenses uh, divided into three categories uh, according to the time frame. Now we move on to the function of these uh, verb tenses. S starting from the present tense, one by one we will discuss how uh, each tense uh, uh, is used, how is it different from the other one and uh, what are uh, the indications, what are the uh, uh, exact specific places where you use these tenses. And this uh, knowledge is going to help you uh, do the exercise that is coming up in the next lecture. That is also a very, very detailed exercise uh, for all uh, tenses that you have. So it's, uh, it will be very, very worthwhile if you go through these tenses in a lot of detail. The function of verb tense is the simple present tense. The simple present is used to describe an action, an event or condition that is occurring in the present at the moment of speaking or writing. The simple present is used when the precise beginning or ending of a present action, event or condition is unknown or is unimportant to the meaning of the sentence. Now, simple present tense is used, uh, you all know, for present actions, for any action that uh, event or condition that is occurring in the present at the moment of speaking or writing when you are talking about it that thing is going on that is that is happening and then it is a habitual action as well now the simple present tense does not indicate the beginning or ending of that particular action because it is not important to the meaning of the sentence you don't need it there it's not necessary so uh, it is uh, uh, not uh, uh, relevant at all to uh, refer to the starting beginning or ending of that action you just say uh, that it is happening right now it is going on so this is simple present tense each of the highlighted verbs in the following sentences is in the simple present tense Let, let's look at the examples now and each sentence describes an action taking place in the present all the highlighted verbs here that are in bold type are the simple present verbs and they are describing actions that are taking place at Uh, the moment, the present moment. Deborah waits patiently while Bridget books the tickets. Now, uh, we have two verbs here, uh, waits and books. Uh, Deborah waits patiently that she waits uh, patiently. She is right now sitting somewhere waiting. And at the same time, at the present, what is happening is that Bridget is booking the tickets. She books the tickets. So, we put an S uh, with the, both the verbs because we have the subjects of singular uh, third person Deborah and Bridget so unke sath s form aayegi the shelf holds three books and a vase of flowers uh, the shelf holds that means the shelf has the capacity of uh, three books and a vase of flowers nothing else can be put there or nothing else is there right now at this moment and holds is your verb here with an s form the crowd moves across the field in an attempt to see the rock star get into her helicopter now The crowd moves across the field in an attempt, moves across the field at the moment they, they just moved uh, to look at the rock star getting into her helicopter. The Stephen sisters are both very talented, Virginia writes and Vanessa paints. Now Virginia writes means that she is a good writer, uh, she um, is in the habit of writing. So it is a habitual action, it is an activity that she uh, mostly does. Vanessa paints, she paints, uh, does not paint walls, she uh, is an artist, she paints paintings and she uh, draws. So uh, these are the two things or actions that are in the present tense that are happening at the moment of speaking, that is why they are in the simple present tense. And Ross annoys Walter by turning pages too quickly. Uh, annoys again is the verb with an S and we have the singular third person subject and that is why 
we have used the s form and annoys is bold uh, type here it is the verb that uh, indicates that the sentence is in the present time frame now the simple present tense is also used to express general truths such as scientific fact as in the following sentences now this is also one very important indication of simple present tense that uh, it is used to indicate uh, scientific facts because scientific facts won't change they will remain the way they are or they the way they have been टिल दी एंड ऑफ द वर्ल्ड बहुत सी ऐसी बातें हैं लाइफ में जो साइंटिफिक हैं जिनका प्रूफ है हमारे पास जो कभी चेंज नहीं होंगी फॉर एग्जाम्पल वाटर ऑलवेज बॉयल्स एट हंड्रेड डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड इट विल नेवर कम डाउन इट विल नेवर गो अप सो ये एक साइंटिफिक फैक्ट है जो हमेशा ऐसा ही रहेगा सूरज मशरक से निकलता है सन राइज फ्राम दी ईस्ट ये भी हमेशा ऐसा फैक्ट रहेगा जो कभी भी नहीं बदलेगा सूरज हमेशा मशरक से ही निकलता रहेगा निकलता रहा है और अब भी ऐसा ही होता है सो साइंटिफिक फैक्ट्स विल नेवर चेंज दैट इज़ वाई उनको हमेशा हम प्रेजेंट टेंस में इंडिकेट करते हैं रेक्टेंगल्स हैव फोर साइड्स कैनेडा डे टेक्स प्लेस ऑन जुलाई वन द एनिवर्सरी ऑफ द साइनिंग ऑफ द ब्रिटिश नॉर्थ अमेरिका एक्ट रेक्टेंगल्स हैव फोर साइड्स दे विल ऑलवेज हैव फोर साइड्स देयर साइड्स वॉन्ट चेंज बिकॉज रेक्टेंगल इज मेड ऑफ फोर डिफरेंट साइड्स एंड कैनेडा डे द इंडिपेंडेंस day of canada always takes place on july 1 it is never going to change the moon circles the earth once every 28 days now the time frame of the moon circling the earth remains the same it is never going to change that again is a general truth it's a scientific fact so you use circles with an s for the present tense calcium is important to the formation of strong bones is is the verb that is in the present tense calcium is important it was important and it will always be important to the formation of strong bones it is never going to change this formation this uh, function of calcium is never going to be changed and then another indication of the simple present tense is it is used to indicate a habitual action event or condition as in the following sentences now look at these sentences the simple present is used to indicate a habitual action something that is a habit of yours that you do regularly uh, that has been going on since a long time aur aap rozana wo kaam karte hain aise kaamon ke liye bhi hum simple present tense istemal karte hain for example leonard goes to the jumping horse tavern every thursday evening he goes to that tavern tavern is a um a small hotel or a, a motel a motel uh, where you go and have a drink or have a cup of coffee so leonard goes to this tavern every thursday evening he goes there this is his habit so this is not going to change it has been happening for a long time it might change but right now it goes on uh, for a, a, a long time my grandmother sends me new mittens each spring my grandmother sends me now sends is the verb here that is in simple present tense and this is an activity that the grandmother mother does uh, regularly in fairy tales things happen in threes now in fairy tales you see we usually have three characters uh, cinderella has has our three sisters we have three musketeers then uh, there are many other uh, um, short stories uh, fairy tales where you have um, this uh, this set of three uh, involved in the plot of the story so uh, things happen in threes that means these this is one uh, important rule of fairy tales maybe so this has been going on it's a habit it's a kind of a, a condition then we never finish jigsaw puzzle because the cat always eats some of the pieces now jigsaw puzzle when they when they are playing they cannot finish it because the cat always eats eats is the simple uh, present tense verb here and finish as well because this is a, a habitual action that does not uh, never actually gets completed because uh, the cat's a uh, cat eats some of the pieces jessie polishes the menorah on wednesdays menorah is a, a branched candle jisme ek uh, stand candle stand mein kafi sari candles uh, candles aati hain uh, jessie polishes the menorah on wednesday she does this as a habit as a regular activity every wednesday so this was the second indication for your simple present tense and we move on to the next one that is the simple present is also used when writing about works of art as in the following sentences when you are supposed to say something about works of art about uh, a painting about a writing about um, um, 
uh, architecture that people have made because these things have been made by people and they are they have been the same way since a very long time aur jab tak ye rahengi aise hi rahengi aap shakespeare ki kisi bhi kitab ko utha ke usme se uh, usme se kuch change nahi kar sakte because uh, that's how he wrote it and that's how it is recorded similarly if you look at our religious books uh, like uh, quran e pak we we cannot uh, change anything regarding that jab aap quran e pak ke bare mein kuch likhte to you say uh, quran e pak mein zikr aaya hai the quran says so ye present tense jo aap istemal karte hain iska matlab hai ke ye baatein uh, have been since uh, the same way since a very long time these are works of art and you simply cannot uh, change them uh, similarly uh, about paintings about Uh, pieces of writing that you go for you are not supposed to make any changes lolly willows is the protagonist of the novel towns and published in 1926 protagonist is the main character so the name of the novel is towns and that was published in 1926 and the name of the character is lolly willows who is the protagonist the main character she is the main character she is going to be the main character since for a very long time till the novel remains so you cannot change the uh, character uh, in the uh, book one of art artemisia's uh, best known paintings represents judith's beheading of holofernes uh, now this is about a painting that represents so uh, this painting what it shows will remain the same for a long time uh, whatever it represents uh, uh, it will uh, be the same you cannot change it you cannot say ke ab us painting mein ye change aa gaya hai yahan se log move kar ke udhar chale gaye hain aisa ho hi nahi sakta because it is a work of art and you are supposed to talk about it. in the simple present tense so represents is the verb that indicates simple present tense here lear rages against the silence of cordelia and only belatedly realizes that she not her more vocal sisters loves him now uh, you see here we have three verbs that indicate simple present tense and this sentence has been taken from uh, the uh, shakespeare's uh, tragedy king lear so uh, king lear uh, rages against the silence of cordelia cordelia is the main character here king lear is the main character but cordelia is his daughter uh, rages uh, means he is very angry at cordelia's being silent when he asks uh, all three sisters uh, how much they love him uh, and uh, then belatedly later on he realizes this is another simple present verb that uh, only she uh, loves him more than the other two sisters and uh, all three verbs are simple present tense because uh, the sentence has been taken from uh, a work of art a literary uh, piece uh, and a, a, a book written by uh, shakespeare so you cannot change it the play ends with an epilogue spoken by the fool and the play ends that means it ye epilogue jo hai play, play ka hissa hai epilogue ka matlab hota hai a speech or uh, um, um, a piece of uh, spoken uh, 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 debate or speech or something said at the end of a book uh, prologue shuru mein hota hai aur epilogue end mein hota hai so it ends the novel here and um, ends is the verb that tells us that uh, this is about a work of art and you are not supposed to change the verb at all the next indication of simple present tense is the simple present is uh, can also be used to refer to a future event when used in conjunction with an adverb or adverbial phrase now simple present tense uh, uh, not just indicates present tense it can also be used for future actions uh, look at this the doors open in 10 minutes now we know that the doors are not open right now people are waiting and the doors will open in the future that is after 10 minutes but we have the verb as open so aap is tarah bhi istemal kar sakte hain isko isme koi problem nahi hai it's just that your verb is in the simple present tense but the meaning that you are conveying is future similarly all other examples the premier arrives on tuesday he has not arrived yet he will arrive on tuesday but your verb is in the simple present tense classes end next week and that means they are going to end next week the publisher distributes the galley proofs next wednesday distributes is the simple present verb but the meaning is future the lunar eclipse begins in exactly 43 minutes it hasn't begun yet in the next 43 minutes it is going to begin 
moving on to the second uh, present uh, progressive uh, present tense uh, in the list that is present progressive while the simple present and the present progressive are sometimes used interchangeably the present progressive emphasizes the continuing nature of uh, an action event or condition now uh, the difference between simple present tense and present progressive is that present progressive is used for a continuous action and simple present is something that happens in the present each of the highlighted verbs in the following sentences is in the present progressive tense in each sentence the ongoing nature of the action is emphasized by the use of um, present progressive rather than the simple present now uh, looking at these examples uh, you will see that uh, all your verbs are in the present continuous form uh, and uh, they have their uh, respective um, helping verbs with them and the present continuous form indicates the uh, continuous nature of the action that is happening it just not it, it just does not happen it is still going on it is happening uh, right now it is a continuous action Nora is looking for the first paperback editions of all Raymond Chandler's books is looking is is the helping verb according to your subject that is Nora and looking is the ing form of look she is looking for right now Deirdre is dusting all the shelves on the second floor of the shop uh, is dusting is doing that right now the union members are pacing up and down in front of the factory uh, are pacing are moving quickly up and down and then we have this plural subject that is why we will be using are rather than is uh, present progressive tense ke uh, helping verbs hote hain is am and are उनको आपको अपने पर्सन जो सेकंड पर फर्स्ट सेकंड थर्ड पर्सन है उसके अकॉर्डिंगली डिस्ट्रीब्यूट करना होता है के पी एल ए इज ब्रॉडकास्टिंग द हिट्स ऑफ द सेवेंटीज दिस इवनिंग इज ब्रॉडकास्टिंग सो इज इज द हेल्पिंग वर्ब अकॉर्डिंग टू द सब्जेक्ट एंड ब्रॉडकास्टिंग दैट मीन्स दे आर ब्रॉडकास्टिंग दिस इवनिंग द प्रेस प्रेसिस आर प्रिंटिंग द फर्स्ट एडिशन ऑफ टमोरोज पेपर राइट नाउ द एक्शन दैट इज गोइंग ऑन इज द प्रिंटिंग ऑफ द टमोरोज न्यूज पेपर सो आर प्रिंटिंग इज द प्रेजेंट प्रोग्रेसिव वर्ब हियर now it's just like uh, your uh, simple present tense the present progressive is occasionally used to refer to a future uh, event when uh, used in conjunction with an adverb or adverbial phrase as in the following sentences now the present progressive uh, just like present tense uh, or is also sometimes used to indicate future tense although uh, your verb is in the simple present tense uh, present continuous tense but the meaning that you convey is uh, the future look at these examples the doors are opening in 10 minutes the doors are opening they are not right now open but they are opening in 10 minutes the premier is arriving on tuesday premier will arrive on tuesday classes are ending next week classes will end next week and the publisher is distributing the galley proofs next wednesday uh, these all verbs basically uh, are in the present progressive but they are indicating future time along with the present uh, simple tense uh, present progressive tense is also used for a future action just like uh, these examples that we have just given you uh, the same examples have been changed into present continuous so that you uh, see what is the similarity between them it's just the difference of the formation of tense the meaning is the same that is the future so both tenses can be used that way moving on to the present perfect tense the present perfect tense is used to describe action that began in the past and continues into the present or has just been completed at the moment of utterance the present perfect tense is specifically for those actions that have started in the past but they uh, either they are continuing continuing into the present or they have just finished at the moment of utterance abhi abhi khatam ho gaye hain so uh, present perfect aise actions ke liye istemal hota hai the present perfect is often used to suggest that a past action still has an effect upon something happening in the present now whenever you have a confusion between present perfect and past perfect always think that your present perfect tense has some impact on the present wo hamesha past mein shuru ho ke past mein khatam nahi hota 
उसका कुछ ना कुछ इम्पैक्ट आपके प्रेजेंट के ऊपर हमेशा रहता है ईच ऑफ दाईलाइटेड कंपाउंड वर्ब्स इन द फॉलोइंग सेंटेंसेस इज इन द प्रेजेंट परफेक्ट टेंस ना लुकिंग एट दीज वर्ब्स एंड देन वी हैव द ब्रीफ एक्सप्लेनेशन एज वेल विल बी लुकिंग एट दोज एंड विल डिस्कस हाउ ईच वर्ब इज यूज Now let's look at these examples they have not delivered the documents we need they have not delivered these documents we need now look at this uh, uh, verbal group have not delivered uh, we have uh, um the ha have according to the subject that is they and then delivered is the third form of the verb here we are uh, done with the formation of your present uh, perfect tense but let's look at the explanation and see how this action has the uh, impact on the present this statement uh, sentence suggests that the documents were not delivered in the past and that they were still undelivered yes the the action of not being delivered still has uh, the impact on the present because we know that they have not been delivered they have not delivered the documents we need that means uh, the doc documents have still not been delivered abhi tak present par bhi uh, is action ka koi uh, asar hai so this is the difference between uh, past perfect and present perfect ye aapko yaad rakhna hai the health department has decided that all high school students should be immunized against meningitis meningitis is the name of a disease the health department has decided that all high school students now of course when they have decided uh, we use present perfect in order to suggest that the decision made in the past is still important in the present of course the decision of all high school students being immunized has some effect on the present ke अब वो इम्यूनाइज होंगे तो फ्यूचर में उनको ये बीमारी नहीं होगी द गवर्नमेंट हैज कट यूनिवर्सिटी बजट्स कॉन्सिक्वेंटली द डीन हैज इंक्रीज द साइज ऑफ मोस्ट क्लासेस नाउ दिस एक्शन आल्सो हैज एन इंपैक्ट ऑन द प्रेजेंट एज द गवर्नमेंट हैज कट यूनिवर्सिटी बजट्स दैट मीन्स दे हैव स्टार्टेड गिविंग लेस मनी टू द यूनिवर्सिटीज एंड वट द डीन हैज डन इज कॉन्सिक्वेंटली एज अ रिजल्ट दैट दे हैव इंक्रीज द साइज ऑफ मोस्ट क्लासेस सो दैट मोर स्टूडेंट्स वुड कम इन एंड देर be more revenue more fees and uh, universities ka jo budget univers unko government ki taraf se nahi mil raha wo khud generate karenge here both actions took place some time in the past and continue to influence the present the cut cutting of the budget and the increasing of the most classes uh, most number of classes uh, still has some impact on the present uh, that the number of classes will increase and more revenue will come and government uh, uh, has cut the university budget that is why this happened so the action has a very very specific amount of impact on the present the heat wave has lasted 3 weeks In this sentence the writer uses the present perfect to indicate that a condition the heat wave began in the past and continues to affect the present has lasted that mean it is still going on abhi tak uska asar jo hai wo mausam ke upar hai Donna has dreamt about frogs sitting in trees every night this week here the action of dreaming has begun in the past and continues into the present even now during the last week whole night every night she has dreamt about uh, frogs sitting in the trees now looking at all these bold types you should get a clear idea that this is the formation of your uh, present perfect tense moving on to present perfect progressive tense like the present perfect the present progressive tense perfect progressive tense is used to describe an action event or condition that has begun in the past and continues into the present the present perfect progressive however is used to stress the ongoing nature of that action now uh, it was almost the same uh, with the, your uh, present um, परफेक्ट टेंस बट प्रेजेंट परफेक्ट और प्रेजेंट परफेक्ट प्रोग्रेसिव में फ़र्क क्या होता है कि प्रोग्रेसिव टेंसेज जो हैं वो उनका एक्शन कंटिन्यू करता है आपके प्रेजेंट में इट इज़ स्टिल हैपनिंग ऑल दो द प्रेजेंट परफेक्ट टेंस का एक्शन हो नहीं रहा होता लेकिन उसका इम्पैक्ट जो है वो आपके प्रेजेंट के ऊपर होता है सो दिस इज द डिफरेंस ईच ऑफ द हाईलाइटेड वर्ब्स इन द फॉलोइंग सेंटेंसेज इन इन द प्रेजेंट परफेक्ट प्रोग्रेसिव टेंस एंड ईच सेंटेंस जस्ट दैट दी एक्शन बिगैन इन द पास्ट एंड इज continuing into the present that dog has been barking for 3 hours i wonder if someone will call the owner now the dog has been barking uh, since 3 uh, for 3 hours now with present perfect progressive tense you have uh, you use uh, the uh, expressions of since and for 
and uh, um, we'll talk about this in detail when we are doing the exercises regarding this for is used for a duration of time and uh, for uh, uh, a general time there is no specific time but since is used for a specific time jo ke ek hi time hota hai jo jaisa jis jaisa dusra time nahi ho sakta when you say 3 hours it can be any 3 hours during the day but when you say um, Two o'clock. That is just one uh, two o'clock in the uh, morning or in the evening. So uh, uh, this is the difference between the usage of for and since. So present perfect progressive tense me ye dono jo hai wo use hote hain. That dog has been barking for three hours. So three hours is a duration. It's a period of time. So we use for. I have been relying on my Christmas bonus to pay for the gifts I buy for my large family. Now he has been relying on the Christmas bonus that this it, the action is still going on and they have not received uh, their Christmas bonus even now. They have been publishing this comic book for 10 years. For 10 years again this is a duration of time and the book had been pub have been publishing jo bahut zyada time se publish ho rahi hai that is 10 years. So have have been publishing and similarly yahan pe aapke do helping verb hote hain has or have jinme se accordingly subject ke aapko use karne hote hain we have been seeing geese flying south all afternoon um geese is the plural of goose uh, have been seeing that means uh, the action continues into the present they are still seeing them even though the coroner has been carefully examining the corpse dis discovered in sutherland scully since early this morning we still do not know the cause of death now uh, has been carefully examining now see examining tells us that the uh, coroner uh, the person who does the autopsy or uh, jo uh, post mortem karte hain uh, wo abhi tak डेड बॉडी को एग्जामिन कर रहे हैं लेकिन उसकी डेथ कॉज ऑफ डेथ का पता नहीं चला अगेन वी हैव द फ्रेज सिंस अर्ली दिस मॉर्निंग हेयर सो अर्ली दिस मॉर्निंग ऑफ कोर्स उस दिन में अर्ली मॉर्निंग वही एक दफ़ा हुआ है दैट इज़ वाई इट्स अ स्पेसिफिक टाइम विद दिस वी यूज सिंस नाउ आफ्टर द प्रजेंट टेंसेज वी मूव ऑन टू योर पास्ट टेंसेज The simple past tense is used to describe an action, an event, or condition that occurred in the past some time before the moment of speaking or writing. काम जो भी आपने किया उससे पहले उसके बताने से पहले ये काम खत्म हो चुका होता है सिंपल पास टेंस तब यूज होता है ईच ऑफ द हाईलाइटेड वर्ब्स इन द फॉलोइंग सेंटेंसेस इज इन द सिंपल पास टेंस एंड ईच सेंटेंस डिस्क्राइब्स एन एक्शन टेकिंग प्लेस एट सम पॉइंट इन पास्ट a flea jumped from the dog to the cat flea jumped that means ye action ho chuka hai phoebe gripped the hammer tightly and nailed the boards together gripped usne pakda that means past mein ye kaam hua the gem stones sparkled in a velvet lined display case uh, artemisia probably died in 1652 The storyteller began every story by saying a long time ago when the earth was green Uh, now look at all these verbs they are all in the second form of the verb past tense form is slightly simpler in a way ke usme sirf ek hi ki tarah ki form aapko use karni hoti hai and that is simple past tense second form of the verb simple present tense thoda sa hamare pakistani students ke liye complicated ho jata hai because they have to use the s form and uh, they also have to use uh, the um, फर्स्ट फॉर्म ऑफ द वर्ब एंड देन जब आप उसका क्वेश्चन बनाते हैं तो वहाँ पर आपको डू और डज का डिफरेंस भी देखना होता है नाउ वी मूव ऑन टू द सेकेंड पास टेंस दैट इज द पास्ट प्रोग्रेसिव टेंस द पास्ट प्रोग्रेसिव टेंस इज यूज टू डिस्क्राइब एक्शन ऑन गोइंग इन द पास्ट दीज एक्शन ऑफन टेक प्लेस विद इन अ स्पेसिफिक टाइम फ्रेम वाइल एक्शन रेफर टू इन द प्रेजेंट प्रोग्रेसिव हैव connection some connection to the present actions refer to the past progressive have no immediate or obvious connection to the present now when you talk about past progressive tense the past progressive tense is different from present progressive tense in the sense that your uh, past progressive tense does not have any immediate connection with the present isme uh, action past mein shuru hota hai past mein khatam ho jata hai lekin present continuous ka jo action hai wo present mein move karta hai uska impact present par hota hai प्रेजेंट में अभी हो रहा होता है सो ऑन गोइंग एक्शन टुक प्लेस एंड वर्क कम्प्लीटेड एट सम पॉइंट वेल बिफोर द टाइम ऑफ स्पीकिंग और राइटिंग जब आप इन एक्शन के बारे में बता रहे होते तो ये 
बताने से बहुत पहले तक शुरू और ख़त्म हो चुके होते हैं सो दिस इज़ स्लाइटली ईजियर टू रिमेंबर ईच ऑफ द हाईलाइटेड वर्ड इन द फॉलोइंग सेंटेंसेज इज इन द पास्ट प्रोग्रेसिव टेंस लुक एट दीज द कैट वॉज वॉकिंग अलॉन्ग द ट्री ब्रांच द कैट वॉज वॉकिंग इट वॉज वॉकिंग एंड इट एंडेड द एक्शन टुक प्लेस इन द पास्ट एंड इट स्टार्टेड एंड एंडेड इन द पास्ट दिस सेंटेंस डिस्क्राइब्स एन एक्शन दैट टुक प्लेस ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ कंटिन्यूस टाइम इन द पास्ट द कैट्स एक्शन हैव नो मीडियट रिलेशनशिप टू एनी थिंग अकरिंग इन द प्रेजेंट सो कैट वॉज वॉकिंग इट स्टार्टेड वॉकिंग सम टाइम इन द पास्ट एंड एंडेड वॉकिंग देयर इट डज नॉट हैव एनी इम्पैक्ट ऑन द प्रेजेंट प्रेजेंट से रिलेटेड अभी इसमें कोई बात नहीं हो रही है लीना वॉज टेलिंग अ स्टोरी अबाउट द एक्सप्लॉयट्स ऑफ अ रेड गाओ when a tree branch broke the parlor window here the action was telling took place in the past and continued for some time in the past it was a continuous action and continued in the past past mein hi thodi der ke liye storytelling ka action hua aur uh, khatam ho gaya aur us usi time pe uh, tree branch broke the parlor window when the recess bell rang jessie was waiting a long division uh, was writing a long division problem on the blackboard now uh, at that time jessie was writing what was she doing she was writing she wrote it shuru kiya aur khatam kar diya recess bell ke bajne tak this sentence describes actions ran and was writing that took place sometimes in the past and emphasizes uh, the um, continuing nature of uh, one of the actions was writing was writing is continuous lekin jo rang hai uh, recess bell rang ye continuous nahi hai ye past mein hi hua the archivists were eagerly waiting for the delivery of the former prime minister's uh, private papers now were waiting they were waiting they started waiting in the past and they uh, finished waiting even then here the ongoing action of waiting occurred at some time unconnected to the present so uh, this particular uh, phenomena that uh, your present uh, past perfect tense sorry past continuous tense does not have any action any uh, कनेक्शन विद द प्रेजेंट इज मेक्स इट ईजियर टू रिमेंबर इसमें आपके हेल्पिंग वर्ब होते हैं वॉज और वर्ब वॉज फॉर सिंगुलर वर्ब फॉर प्लूरल एंड यू हैव टू चूज दैम अकॉर्डिंग टू योर सब्जेक्ट्स बिटवीन नाइनटीन फोर्टी टू एंड नाइनटीन फोर्टी फोर द फ्रेंक एंड वैन डैम फैमिलीज वर हाइडिंग इन एन इन एन एम्स्टरडैम ऑफिस बिल्डिंग लाओ जब भी कोई एक्शन एक एक्सटेंडेड पीरियड ऑफ टाइम के लिए बताया जाता है उसके लिए भी आप uh, पास्ट प्रोग्रेसिव पास्ट कंटिन्यूस टेंस यूज करते हैं इन दिस सेंटेंस वी सी दैट द फैमिलीज वर हाइडिंग फ्रॉम 1942 टू 44 दिस वाज अ लॉन्ग टाइम इट वाज ऑलमोस्ट मोर देन टू इयर्स सो इन दिस सेंटेंस द एक्शन ऑफ हाइडिंग टुक प्लेस ओवर एन एक्सटेंडेड पीरियड ऑफ टाइम एंड द कंटिन्यूइंग नेचर ऑफ द हाइडिंग इज एम्फेसाइज कंटिन्यूस रहा लेकिन पास्ट में ही था 1942 से 44 तक दे स्टार्टेड सम टाइम इन 1942 एंड एंडेड इन 1944 फोर्टी फोर पीरियड ऑफ टाइम है एक्सटेंडेड पीरियड ऑफ टाइम उसके लिए भी आप पास्ट कॉन्टीन्यूस टेंस जो है वो इस्तेमाल करते हैं moving on to uh, the third past uh, perfect tense that is past perfect tense uh, the past perfect tense is used to refer to actions that took place and were completed in the past they took place and they were completed in the past started and ended in the past ab ye continuous tense se kaise difference ho, ho, hota hai because past continuous tense mein एक्शन की नेचर कॉन्टीन्यूस होती है द कैट वॉज वॉकिंग ऑल दो अगर आप यहाँ पर कहेंगे यू विल से द कैट हैड वॉकड उसमें हैड का हेल्पिंग वर्ब आ जाएगा वो उसने शुरू भी उसी टाइम पे किया पास्ट uh, में ही और ख़त्म भी पास्ट में कर दिया दैट्स इट द पास्ट परफेक्ट टेंस इज यूज टू इंडिकेट एक्शन दैट टुक प्लेस एंड वर कम्प्लीटेड इन द पास्ट द पास्ट परफेक्ट इज ऑफन यूज टू एम्फोसाइज दैट वन एक्शन और इवेंट और कंडीशन एंडेड बिफोर एन अदर पास्ट एक्शन इवेंट और कंडीशन बिगैन अब दूसरी जो इंडिकेशन होती है पास्ट परफेक्ट यूज करने की वो तब होती है जब आपके सेंटेंस में दो एक्शन हो रहे हों और एक एक्शन दूसरे एक्शन के शुरू होने से पहले खत्म हो जाए सो so, यहां पर भी आप एक एक्शन को पास्ट परफेक्ट टेंस में इंडिकेट करते हैं ईच ऑफ दाइलाइटेड वर्ब इन दॉलोइंग सेंटेंसेज इज इन दी पास्ट परफेक्ट मेरियम अराइव एट फाइव पी एम बट मिस्टर विटकर हैड क्लोज द स्टोर नाउ 
before Miriam arrived, if Mr. Whitaker had closed the store. All the events in this sentence took place in the past, but the act of closing the store takes place before Miriam's arrival. So, past me hi ho rahe hai dono action, lekin ek action dousre se thoda pehle ho raha hai. Dukaan band hone ka action, store band hone ka action Miriam ke aane se pehle ho chuka hai. After we located the restaurant that Christian had raved about, we ate supper there every Friday. Now, um, here the praise had raved precedes the finding. Jo bhi unho ne restaurant ki tarif ki, wo restaurant ko dhoondne se pehle ki thi. And when they found it, they kept eating there for a long time. Of the restaurant, both actions took place sometime before the moment of speaking. और राइटिंग दोनों एक्शन हुए पास में ही होते हैं लेकिन एक एक्शन थोड़ा सा दूसरे एक्शन से पहले होता है the elephant had eaten all the hay so we had it uh, uh, fed it oats for a week had eaten again we have the helping verb had and then uh, eat की third form है हमारे पास eaten um, in this sentence, both actions take place in the past, but the eating of the hay had eaten preceded the eating of the oats, that is fed. Uh, now, had eaten, uh, unho oats, jo hay jo hai, wo sari elephant ne kha li thi. So, ye action pehle hua, aur jo oats khane ka action hai, wo baad mein hua. So, past uh, progressive, jo, per perfect tense hota hai, wo aap use karte hai tab, jab aapke paas do sentences hote hai, do actions huye hote hai, ek sentence mein, aur un mein se ek, dousre se pehle hua ho. So, jo pehle action hota hai, uske liye aap use karte hai, past perfect. The heat wave lasted three weeks. While the sentence, the heat wave has lasted three weeks, suggests that a condition began in the past and continues into the present. This sentence describes an action that began and ended sometime in the past, had lasted. Now, this is example hai, is mein aapko saaf nazar a hai, that the heat wave lasted, had lasted three weeks, that means shuru bhi past mein hoi, khatam bhi past mein hoi. But when you say has lasted, to tab uska matlab ye hai, ke heat wave abhi bhi chal rahi hai, uska kuch impact present ke upar abhi bhi hai. By using the past perfect, the writer indicates that the heat wave has no connection any with any events occurring in the present. Past perfect use karke aap ye bata rahe hain ki heat wave ka ab present ke saath koi taluk nahi hai. The last example is after she had learned to drive, Alice felt more independent. Now. Uh, Learning to drive ke baad, she started feeling more independent. So, felt is the verb in the simple present tense and had learned would be jo usse pehle hua, jo purana action hota hai, uske liye aap past perfect tense use karte hai. Here, the learning took place and was completed at a specific time in the past. By using the past perfect rather than the simple past learned, the writer emphasizes that the learning preceded the feeling of independence. You can also say after she learned to drive, Alice felt more independent. Lekin isme kya hoga ki aapka action aise lage kareeb kareeb hoon hai. But when you say after she had learned to drive, Alice felt more independent. Had learned indicates that the action of learning preceded uh, feeling, uh, the action of feeling independent. The past perfect progressive tense, the past perfect progressive is used to indicate that a continuing action in the present began before in the past began before another past action began or interrupted the first action. Now past perfect progressive is a lot closer to what you see in the um, past uh, perfect tense. Past perfect progressive tells us the continuing nature of an action that uh, began in the past before another past action began and interrupted it. Now here is interruption ka, uh, element aa jata hai ki ek dusra action and hai aur wo is uh, wale action ko interrupt karta hai. Each of the highlighted compound verbs in the following sentences is in the past perfect progressive tense. The toddlers had been running around the schoolyard for 10 minutes before the teachers shooed them back inside. Now, the toddlers had been running for a long time. This e action continuous past mein chal raha tha. Aur usse, uh, uske baad, teachers ne unko wapas classes ke andar bheja. So, another action happened that interrupted this action of running around by the toddlers. So, they were running around aur unki running around ko kis ne aake interrupt kiya? The teachers shooed Showing them back into the classrooms. Here the action of toddlers had been running is ongoing in the past and precedes the action of the teachers 
विच ऑल्सो टेक्स प्लेस इन द पास्ट एक्शन पास्ट परफेक्ट प्रोग्रेसिव में पास्ट में ही होते हैं दिनों दोनों लेकिन वन ऑफ द एक्शन इज इंटरप्टेड बाय द अदर वन वी हैड बिन टॉकिंग अबाउट रीपेंटिंग द फ्रंट रूम फॉर थ्री ईयर्स एंड लास्ट नाइट वी फाइनली बॉट द पेंट Now this example, the ongoing action of talking precedes another past action, bought. Now they were talking before, and then finally they bought the paint. Uh, that means कि एक उनका जो talking का action था उसको interrupt किसने किया? Buying the paints. A construction crew had been digging one pit after another in the middle of my street for three days before they found the water main. Now they were looking for the water main pipe, and they had been digging one pit after another. And what uh, was um, Uh, what interrupted their digging the founding the uh, finding of uh, the water main and that stopped their digging ab wahan pe aake of course they will stop digging and they are going to do what they wanted to do with the water main here the action of digging had been uh, digging took place in the past and occurred over a period of time the digging was followed by the action of finding फाउंड सो एडविन डिगिंग के साथ आपके बाकी एक्शन आप देखें वो सिंपल पास्ट में आ रहे हैं वो किसी और टेंस में नहीं है Madeline had been reading mystery novels for several several years before she discovered the works of Agatha Christie. Now, उसका जो Agatha Christie के works discover करने का action था that interrupted her uh, reading uh, uh, action of reading uh, mystery novels. In this uh, sentence, the act of uh, discovery discovered occurred in the past, but after the uh, the ongoing and repeated action of reading had been reading. The chef's assistant had been chopping. vegetables for, for several minutes before he realized that he had minced his apron strings now uh, this sentence is a bit more complex that it contains three different past verb tenses now you see we have three different past verbs here had been chopping uh, he realized that he had minced ab isme hamare paas simple past bhi hai hamare paas uh, past perfect bhi hai aur past perfect continuous bhi hai now see ke in teenon ka aapas mein kya relationship hai the sequence of tenses conveys a complex set of information the past perfect progressive had been chopping is used to emphasize the ongoing nature of the past act of chopping had been chopping ho gaya ke जो वो जॉब कर रहा था दैट इज द ऑन गोइंग एक्शन वाइल अ सेकेंड पास्ट परफेक्ट प्रोग्रेसिव दैट इज हैड बीन मिनसिंग कुड बी यूज the past perfect had means is used to suggest that act of mincing was completed now jo kaam complete ho chuka tha past mein wo tha had means he re later realized ki usne apni apron ki strings ko bhi saath mein minced kar means kar diya hai kar diya hai that means wo ho gayi hain कर दिया गया होगा या कर रहा होगा नहीं है इट्स नॉट कंटिन्यूस सो वहां पर हमने पास्ट परफेक्ट इसलिए यूज किया द सिंपल पास्ट इज यूज टू डिस्क्राइब द एक्शन क्लोजेस्ट टू द प्रेजेंट क्लोजेस्ट टू द प्रेजेंट इन द सेंस दैट ही रियलाइज लेटर कि उसने क्या कर दिया है अगेन जो कर दिया है वो पास्ट में हुआ है लेकिन सबसे क्लोज जो कर प्रेजेंट के क्लोज काम था वो था रियलाइजेशन का काम सो दिस इज द डिफरेंस आपको जब दिस इज कॉल्ड सीक्वेंस ऑफ टेंसेज नाउ इन दिस लाइन वी हैव थ्री डिफरेंट पास टेंसेज हैड मीन्स की जगह हम हैड बीन मीनसिंग यूज कर सकते थे लेकिन uh, उसका मीनिंग फर्क हो जाता दैट्स वाई वी डेंट यूज इट now moving on to our future tenses we uh, start off with simple future tense the simple future is used to refer to actions that will take place after the act of speaking or writing uh, future tense uh, is very simple as it indicates jo kaam bhi hona hai future mein ye usse indicate karte hain each of the highlighted verbs in the following sentences is in the simple future tense they will meet us at the newest cafe in the market will meet that means they will they will meet us in uh, some time in future will you walk the dog tonight um will you do it uh, in the future that is aaj raat ko karoge ya nahi at the feast we will eat heartily bobby will call you tomorrow with details about the agenda that means the call will come tomorrow the smiths say that they will not move their chicken coop um and will not move this is a negative sentence that means ke they are not going to do uh, uh, what they have been asked to do so all these sentences uh, have will as helping verb as i told you earlier in the modern linguistic settings will and shall are used uh, interchangeably lekin shall kahan use hota hai ye aapko pata hona chahiye you use shall with i and we only and all the rest of the subjects or uh, first second third persons use will with them 
Now the future progressive uh, is a tense that is used to describe actions ongoing in the future. Any actions that are ongoing in the future that will continue in the future, they are uh, they take a future progressive tense. The future progressive is used to refer to continuing action that will occur in the future. Now look at these sentences. The glee club will be performing at the celebration of the town's centenary. Will be performing. इसमें B की एडिशन एक होती है जो हम करते हैं और इसी से आप आइडेंटिफाई कर सकते हैं कि ये एक फ्यूचर कॉन्टीन्यूस टेंस है जिसमें कोई ऐसा काम जो फ्यूचर में कंटिन्यू होगा उसका जिक्र होता है ई एन विल बी वर्किंग ऑन द कंप्यूटर सिस्टम फॉर द नेक्स्ट टू वीक्स द सिलेक्शन कमेटी विल बी मीटिंग एवरी वेंसडे मॉर्निंग वी विल बी राइटिंग एन एग्जाम एवरी आफ्टरनून नेक्स्ट वीक दे विल बी रिंगिंग द बेल्स फॉर हाइपैचिया नेक्स्ट मंथ विल बी वर्किंग विल बी मीटिंग यहाँ पर भी आपका जो हेल्पिंग वर्ब है वो विल से शेल हो सकता है अकॉर्डिंग टू योर सब्जेक्ट्स वी के साथ शेल होना चाहिए वी शेल बी राइटिंग एन एग्जाम एवरी आफ्टरनून नेक्स्ट वीक बट इन द मॉडर्न लिंग्विस्टिक सेटिंग्स विल एंड शेल इज यूज कंसिडर्ड मोर फॉर्मल विल थोड़ा सा इनफॉर्मल है Now moving on to the future perfect tense, it is used to refer to an action uh, that will be completed some uh, सम टाइम इन द फ्यूचर बिफोर एन अदर एक्शन टेक्स प्लेस अब इसमें भी दूसरे एक्शन की इन्वॉल्वमेंट आती है फ्यूचर परफेक्ट टेंस तब यूज होता है जब फ्यूचर में आपका कोई और एक्शन होने से पहले ये एक्शन हो रहा हो ईच ऑफ द हाईलाइटेड वर्ब्स इन द फॉलोइंग सेंटेंसेज इज इन द फ्यूचर परफेक्ट टेंस द सर्जन विल हैव ऑपरेटेड ऑन सिक्स पेशेंट्स बिफोर शी अटेंड द लंच एंड मीटिंग विल हैव ऑपरेटेड ऑन सिक्स पेशेंट्स बिफोर शी अटेंड द लंच एंड मीटिंग उसके ऑपरेशन की सीरीज को क्या चीज इंटरप्ट करेगी क्या चीज होगी एक और दैट इज अटेंडिंग दी लंच एंड मीटिंग सो अच्छी अटेंड होगा और अटेंड आई टोल्ड यू इन द बिगिनिंग सिंपल प्रेजेंट टेंस इज ऑल्सो यूज टू इंडिकेट फ्यूचर इवेंट और वही हो रहा है यहाँ पे आपका अटेंड जो है वो फ्यूचर को कन्वे कर रहा है In this sentence, the act of operating will have operated takes place in the future some time before the act of attending. The plumber and his assistant will have soldered all the new joints in pipes before they leave for the next job. Now, उनका will have soldered का जो action है that will be interrupted by another action that is their leaving for the next job. By the time you get back from the uh, corner store, we will have finished writing the thank you letters. Now, by the time you return, आपका जो फिनिशिंग लेटर फिनिश करने का काम है उसको इंटरप्ट करेगा आपका वापस आना द एक्ट ऑफ रिटर्निंग फ्रॉम द स्टोर टेक्स प्लेस आफ्टर द एक्ट ऑफ राइटिंग विल हैव रिटर्न इफ दिस ईयर इज लाइक लास्ट ईयर आई हैव विल हैव फिनिश माई हॉलीडे शॉपिंग लॉन्ग बिफोर माई ब्रदर स्टार्ट हिज ना इसमें भी आपका जो एक एक्शन है वो है विल हैव फिनिश्ड हॉलीडे शॉपिंग और दूसरा है आपके भाई का अपनी शॉपिंग शुरू करने का काम सो अगेन वी हैव द सिंपल प्रेजेंट टेंस हियर एंड दैट इंडिकेट्स फ्यूचर दिस एग्जांपल द एक्ट ऑफ फिनिशिंग विल हैव फिनिश्ड अकर्स बिफोर वेल बिफोर द एक्ट ऑफ स्टार्टिंग द नेक्स्ट वर्क बाय द ब्रदर दे विल हैव रिटन देयर फर्स्ट एग्जाम बाय द टाइम वी गेट आउट ऑफ बेड सी द विल हैव रिटर्न का जो एक्शन है वो खत्म हो चुका होगा जब एक और एक्शन होगा एक एक्शन खत्म होगा और दूसरा एक्शन होगा द एक्ट ऑफ गेटिंग आउट ऑफ बेड अकर समाइम आफ्टर द राइटिंग ऑफ द एग्जाम द लास्ट टेंस इन आवर सीरीज इज द फ्यूचर परफेक्ट प्रोग्रेसिव टेंस दिस टेंस इज हार्डली एवर यूज इन इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज आपने कभी देखा नहीं होगा इस टेंस को बहुत ज़्यादा कॉम्पोजिशन में यूज होता हुआ बिकॉज इसकी इतनी ज़्यादा जरूरत नहीं होती बट स्टिल यू नीड टू नो वट आर द फॉर्मेशन रूल्स हाउ इट इज कनेक्टेड एंड मेड The future perfect progressive tense is used to indicate a continuing action that will be completed at some specified time in the future. This tense is rarely used. is used to indicate a continuing action that will be completed at some specified time in the future. Is maybe you have seen or four key phrases. But at the end, each of the highlighted verbs in the following sentences is in the future perfect progressive tense. I will have been studying Greek for three years by the end of this term. Is me. आपके पास ड्यूरेशन होती है जो कि टाइम फ्रेम बताती है विल हैव बीन स्टडिंग ग्रीक इन दिस सेंटेंस द फ्यूचर परफेक्ट प्रोग्रेसिव इज यूज टू इंडिकेट द ऑन गोइंग नेचर ऑफ द फ्यूचर एक्ट ऑफ स्टडिंग द एक्ट ऑफ स्टडिंग विल हैव बीन स्टडिंग विल अकर बिफोर द अपकमिंग एंड ऑफ एग्जाम अगले एक काम से पहले हो जाएगा लेकिन फ्यूचर में कॉन्टीन्यूइंग एक्शन है
By the time the meeting is over, the committee will have been arguing about which candidate to interview for three hours. Will have been arguing. आपके पास time frame है, एक extended period of time पे आपका ये action जो है वो continue हुआ है. Similarly, in this sentence, the ongoing nature of a fact of a future act will have been arguing is emphasized by the use of the future perfect progressive. The act of sustained arguing will take place before the meeting is over. Sustained means um, that is. really solid and uh, on a long period of time when he returns the wine will have been fermenting for 3 months here the ongoing action of fermentation will proceed will have been fermenting the act of returning before he comes back the act of fermentation will be going on now the uh, handout here ends but we are through with all uh, the uh, 12 uh, tenses of english language that uh, tell us how um, they are used uh, the four past tenses uh, the simple past the past progressive the past perfect the past perfect progressive we talked about their formation when and where and why they are used uh, and, and with examples the present tenses the simple present uh, present progressive present perfect present perfect progressive again we also compare these tenses with the past tenses we try to understand what is the overlapping relationship of these tenses and we also talked about examples that gave, gave you a very clear idea where they are used the simple future tense the future progressive the future perfect and the future perfect progressive all these future tenses are also really important uh, we saw how, what helping verbs we can use how these are formed and what are the indications where these tenses are used and how you can identify them as compared to other tenses so i hope that this uh, um, document helped you understand or refresh your knowledge of the uh, english language tenses uh, that are 12 in number how in various different categories they can be uh, divided and uh, what are the formation rules for these tenses now here we are at the end of lecture number 7 we discussed uh, um, uh, verb tenses in english language in a lot of detail we talked about the related uh, examples we discussed all te 12 tenses how they are formed how they are different from each other and how uh, sequence of tenses rules can affect the usage of various different tenses in one passage in one paragraph or the way you want to use them So I hope the lecture really helped you refresh and uh, build upon uh, the knowledge you have of your tenses. In the coming lectures, we are going to talk about uh, the uh, detailed exercises on these tenses. So uh, uh, do go through those exercises so that uh, your uh, knowledge of the tenses is refreshed and you gain a practical experience of uh, actually applying that knowledge and understanding how and when these tenses are used. Uh, we are through with lecture number 7 we'll uh, see you in the next lecture thank you very much